This time on the PropMaster, well, we actually get to start the actual assembly of the jetpack. What? I said start. I mean, it's a complicated job. We're not going to get done in one video. Jeez. It may not be that much to look at right now, but we actually got quite a bit of it done. We've got the basic parts already mounted here, as well as we got the back contouring done. And most importantly, we've got a way to actually attach this onto the back armor using the strap brace. So that's actually quite a bit. With that said, all I'll have to do now is ask you to please comment and like and subscribe my videos not getting a lot of comments and that's really what keeps these videos going so you know if you have any questions even if they seem really minor ask and i'd be happy to answer as best as i can and uh with that said even though it doesn't look like much there's a lot to do so let's get started okay so the first thing we're going to do before we can actually start working on the uh, pieces of Sintra is we need to make some clips they're going to actually hold this on to the, uh, the strap frame that we made before. And the clips look like this. And they're going to fit down onto that aluminum piece that is on the, on the uh, frame, basically like this. And that'll hold everything onto your back. And I've just got a one inch which is two and a half centimeters wide piece of aluminum. Uh, I think it's an eighth of an inch, or that's a sixteenth of an inch, which is about three millimeters thick. And I've marked three inches here, which is about seven and a half to eight centimeters. And we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. Just regular hacksaw. And if you don't have a vise, this is one of the main tools that you should go out and buy because it's going to make your life so much easier. It can help you do things that you just can't do any other way. You know, having a, a very strong way to clamp something to a table is, you know, there's really, it's going to make your life so much easier. Now that I have this, I'm just going to go ahead and round off the corners because at the moment this is, you know, razor sharp. I'd say even if you don't have a workshop or something, go out and buy a bench vise like this and then just bolt it to a, a piece of one inch plywood that's, you know, uh, a one and a half foot square, you know, something this big or something, just something to stabilize it. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Um, now I wanna go ahead and just measure the middle of this. Here it is. And let's put this back in here. I'm gonna make this where the, uh, where the line sticks up, maybe a 16th of an inch, you know, just, you can kind of see it there. And it's just sticking a little bit up. You don't wanna put it right on the line. And I'm gonna take a hammer. I don't wanna hit up here on here. I wanna keep my hits pretty low down here um, because I wanna flatten this you know, the bottom is going to stay straight. I want to keep this top part as straight as possible. Okay. And now I'm just going to put this in the vise and compress this to where it's flat. Um, this is just a, another piece of that same aluminum. I'm gonna put it in here so that this will hold um, the gap the way I want it. You could also just hammer this 
anything like that, but the vise makes it easier. Unfortunately, you're never going to be able to get this to be a perfect, you know, square end here, but that's okay. I don't know if I can show you this or not. Okay, so you can kind of see there's a big gap there, and it, um, you know, it's very sharp point here. I'm going to try to hammer this piece of aluminum in there just to try to make that a little bit more square than it is now. But I'm not going to get it, you know, particularly square. I just want to widen it out a little bit. Okay, so I have just this extra piece again, and you don't have to use the C-clamp, but um, it does have the advantage of stopping this from spreading open when I hammer this down into there. It's not particularly tight. I can almost slide this around. I don't want to squeeze this third piece in there, um, but I do want to just stop this from spreading apart when I hammer this in there. Now, if I had a shorter piece of steel that was the same dimension, uh, I would definitely use it, but what I have is aluminum, so. And if I made this shorter, I could probably hit it harder, but um, it's not that important. Okay. And I think you can see that that fits in there. I mean, it's still nowhere near being a square across the top but um, at least this fits in there a little bit better. It's all gonna work out just fine when actually, you know, for its sexual use. But um, I just wanted to get it a little bit wider here at the, uh, at the end. Now, if you look at our finished, finished piece here, you'll see that I've got a small hole on one end and a much larger hole on the other end so that we can go ahead and put a screw through there and access it with the screwdriver. Um, this is one inch, or I'm sorry, one half of an inch across, um, which is, uh, what, 12 millimeters. And uh, I just want to drill these holes so that this half inch size hole isn't too close to the end. Measure half of a half inch, so a quarter of an inch, that would be where the hole would be if it was actually touching this end here. I don't want it to touch the end, so I'm gonna move that mark another eighth of an inch away from it. So that makes three eighths of an inch. I think my other one is a little bit further away than that, but we don't have to be too precise about this. So uh, there's three eighths of an inch which is, I guess, what? That's uh, nine millimeters. And anywhere between that and a full half inch away from the end would be fine. Maybe we'll split the difference here. And I really should have measured this before I put this in the vise. Let me go ahead and do this. And in fact, none of this has to be this precise, to be honest. You can just put your, you know, screw there so you see you can kind of get some uh, size and eyeball it. I'm trying to make this flush with the top of the vise just so that all of my angles and when I'm looking at this all seem right. Get that good and tight in there. Find the middle. And I don't need a center punch or anything like that because this doesn't have to be anywhere near that precise. This is the screw that I'm going to use to attach this to the back armor. I'm sorry for the back of the jetpack. Um, so I just measured the size of this part of the screw and uh, or the bolt and uh, pick the drill bit size that's like one size larger than that. So I can pretty much guarantee this is going to walk around a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be that precise. And I'm going to drill a hole through both 
of the pieces of aluminum. Next, I'm going to pull out that half inch bit or 12 millimeter. And I'm just gonna drill through the top piece. Looks like I almost countersunk the bottom piece, which is good because that's what we're going to do now. This is called the countersink bit, and it has the same angles as you're going to find for most countersink flat topped uh, bolts. And luckily this will fit just inside that one half inch hole there. I don't want to go too deep because I don't want to make the hole much larger than it already is. Drop it in there and see if it is flush. And it's ever so slightly down below being flush, so that's absolutely fine. Now we can clean up these holes either with something like this which does a great job with aluminum. Or you can just use some small files just to take the burrs off. That's really all you need to do. Um, if there's little burrs in there, it's going to make it hard for this to slide down over the, uh, the piece that's on the strap brace. Let me go ahead and take this out. Now that we have these two, um, you can stop here or you can go ahead and make two more um, because you have these two that slide down over the bar that's on the strap brace but then you also have those two shoulder straps from the strap brace and you can either use this exact same uh, piece here those will just slide up in here and be held in place or you can get some of these which are, uh, I found these on Amazon labeled as holster clips. And you can just put these on things. They're basically belt clips. And what I do like about this is because they're spring loaded, you know, they're basically a spring. When we put those shoulder straps through there, they'll be kind of held in place. Um, so if something happens, your jetpack's not going to just completely come unclipped and fall off. You might ask yourself, why not just use this for the bottom? You could, but these are much larger and they're also very wide. So it doesn't hold them very securely on your, on that, uh, metal bar on the bottom. Plus, even with these, which are much shorter, um, you're really risking dropping your jetpack down quite far on your back and you want it to be even with the back of the, uh, the back armor. So the bigger piece that you get for this, or, you know, for that bottom piece at least is going to greatly affect how high the jetpack rides on your back. So here they are. And, uh, with this out of the way, we can go ahead and start working on the back of the jetpack itself and get on with that part. Okay, there is one last thing you have to do before we can start working on this. And that is, you need to find a two by four or whatever decent sized piece of wood that you've got access to. And you need to cut four pieces that are two inches tall. And that's what, uh, five centimeters. And then cut two pieces that is, they are uh, one and three eighths inches tall or three and a half centimeters, 35 millimeters. And then t finally two pieces that are nine sixteenths of an inch or 14 millimeters. And we're going to use those in a minute. Um, but now that we have all these cut out, now we can actually start working on the back of the jetpack. So using my template here, I just transferred these lines that we had on the other side onto this side. 
Notice this is not the side that has this uh, reinforcement piece glued onto it. Um, this is the part that will actually be on the inside of the jetpack. And I'm going to take an exacto knife or uh, a you know, razor knife of some kind, and I'm going to start cutting down these lines. Now, I don't want to cut all the way through, which is a good thing because that would take forever. I just want to mostly I want to make sure that I cut through this top thin layer of PVC that sandwiches the PVC foam in between. Don't try to do it all at once. And I can feel this squirming around everywhere. This is something that you should probably do while you have a lower surface. This is a nice, comfortable surface for me to work, but it's not a very good surface for me to be able to push down with all my weight to hold something in place. So once I have a few cuts down that line, I'm going to switch over to the other ruler. This one has a cork inside, so it won't squirm around so much. It's got a lot more grip. Now I want to make sure that I cut down toward this spot here that is where all three lines come together. If I go that way, it's going to be really hard to maintain you know, if I try to cut this direction, it's going to try to cut back down this line and not this line, if that makes sense. Just make sure that you cut down toward this central point. Okay, now I'm just going to repeat, repeat that process on this end, or this side. Once you do the first couple of of runs down with very light pressure that you can bear down a little bit harder but still don't you know don't push down super hard with the knife anyway you can push down hard on the ruler just not the knife okay so Hopefully those have all managed to cut through the top layer of PVC. And now we can go ahead and start bending these. Start out with your four blocks that are two inches tall. That's uh, five centimeters. And that's just to get this up off the ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our one and three eighths inch, which is um, 35 millimeters or three and a half centimeters tall. And we want to bend this whole section here down to touch that. Remember this changes, it's straight from here to here and then it kind of angles in a little bit. So we're mostly worried about this part touching the wood. But we can't just bend this down, we're going to have to use some heat. So following this line here that we're about to try to bend, um, I'm going to apply heat all along that line. I have my heat gun turned up all the way. And I'm not going very fast and I'm reasonably close, maybe between an inch and a half of an inch to, from the surface. Hold this flat and bend this down. In fact, what I probably should do is to move these out to the very edge. Yep, we need a little bit more heat.
a little faster than that. Definitely don't want to burn anything. Okay, now it bends easily. And I'm just going to hold it there for a few seconds. Okay, I would make sure that stay there, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this for a good minute. Maybe, maybe as many as five minutes. Now that this is cooled down, I'm just going to repeat the process over here. Okay, let me give that a couple minutes and we'll keep going. Okay, now I'm going to take these and spread them out. Ideally, I want the, uh, the two inch ones to be as close to this line as I can get them. And then I want the, the ones that we just used to be pretty close to this line, but you know, along here. Next we have our 9 16 or 14 millimeter pieces. And now we're going to start using the, these corners here as opposed to this area here because this now changes directions and is coming up, you know, slightly inward. So we'll be using this. Does not have to be super, super precise obviously. One of the reasons why we wanted to make sure that this had cooled off is because we're going to heat this section up again and I don't want this falling down so I need to make sure that all of this up here that's not going to get heated up again holds everything in position. And now I'm going to bend this down until this touches and hopefully make sure, you know, do your best to make sure that this section doesn't bend. You know, bend it, this whole thing, don't let this part bend. One reason why I'm switching back and forth is because I want to let this side, side cool off while I heat this side up. So I'm just going to test see if that bends. It's very hot. It is bending. I think I'm going to give it a little bit more. Making sure this doesn't bend, bend that. And we'll let that cool. Try not to heat up the other joint if you can. Okay, and with any luck at all, this is now the correct shape. Okay, so I've kind of rearranged everything so you can see better. Um, here is the end piece here. And um, as you can see, there's a bit of an issue. You know, obviously these don't line up the way they're supposed to. Um, I went back and looked at the videos of the prototype and the measurements that I used for this are the same ones I used for that. So I'm clueless as to why it's different. I've compared this to the prototype and this is indeed 
the wrong angle here. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Do everything um, like I did in, the, in this video uh, for this angle here and this angle here, but don't do this last bend and use this as your guide for that last bend. Um, you know, line this up. This should be covering up the end and flush at the top. And then use this to uh, line these up. It's an easy fix for me right now and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna heat these up again and bend them to match this. Give it a little more heat. Remember, I kind of butchered this one cut, so that's not going to line up perfectly at the bottom. So just line this up. Okay, let's do the set over here. So we're good on this end. I think we need to work on this one again. It's possible that I have to bend both of these joints just a little bit. I think it got hot enough that time. It's staying in place now. Okay. Now, let's let that cool down. I've kind of gone back and forth on what to do here, and I've decided to go ahead and do this. I'm just going to take some of my gel super glue, and I'm gonna run some just on this part here, not on these, this part here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this piece on across there, and then I can make sure that everything lines up perfectly on these I may have to heat it up and and uh, make some minor adjustments and then I'll take some of the thinner super glue and run it in between here and make sure everything's glued up nice so let's go ahead and do that you don't have to use gel for this but I know it'll stay where it's supposed to be and especially since I have to do this edge on so you can see it, the gel is going to work the best. I just got a little piece of stuff here that I can spread this out with. Maybe don't spread it out. <laughs> the important thing is that I make sure that, oh, by the way, I've got a little center line marked here and here. I'll explain that in a second. I don't want to get uh, my super glue to dry too quickly. Mostly I want to make sure that it's level across the top here. And I think I'm going to have to try that again, but this time without spreading out the super glue. I think the problem I'm having is that the bottom of this is not flat. It's close to flat, but it's not coming in contact all the way across. I've got a couple of high spots, is what I'm basically saying.
Okay, now it's starting to, to stick. Got my zip kicker here. I don't have very much of it left. I don't imagine there's anything to wipe up here. I don't think the zip kicker probably set it off, but just to make sure. And I'm gonna see if I can't push some super glue down into those cracks. Let's see if I can move this so that you can see. I just got a palette knife here. It came with uh, in that same package as my the rest of my uh, paint brushes. Um, it was like you know six dollars. I'm just trying to push this down into the crack. Now instead of zip kicker, I'm going to use a little bit of baking soda. And baking soda is actually an accelerator for super glue or CA glue. And it has the advantage of you can build almost like a gusset. I've got what's left of the uh, regular super glue that I have that is not gel, and I can just kind of run this over it. Be sure don't to suck anything back up because if you suck any of that um, baking powder or baking soda, I'm sorry, into the jar, you're going to kick off your whole super glue container. Yeah, I don't have much left and it's not exactly th as thin as it should be. I'm gonna have to get some more. I've just got a rag that I keep cleaning this off with. Otherwise you'll end up with a big club at the end of this, a big glob of uh, cured super glue. Okay, I'm going to wait about five seconds and then we can clean that off. So that's not exactly the prettiest little piece there, but it does, it will definitely glue this on well. Okay, now we can go ahead and deal with um, these angles. This side looks actually pretty good. This side, however, of course, we know this angle is completely off. That's all my fault. Hopefully you won't have butchered this cut so badly when you do yours. Um, this needs to come down about, you know, uh, an eighth of an inch from, from there down to here. So I'm just going to take my heat gun. I definitely could have done this, um, you know, put this on before I tried to fix it the first time. I see its own weight has just kind of moved it into the right spot, so I want to hold that up a little bit. And once this cools off, we can uh, go ahead and go on with the rest of the project. Okay, this is completely cooled off. It moved up a little bit actually, but it's fine. Um, and I'm going to use the last of my regular super glue. This will get down into the joint a lot better than the thick stuff will. And I'm just going to hold that in the right 
place for 20 or 30 seconds. Okay, that's sticking. I'm gonna hit with a little zip kicker. And I'm gonna repeat the process on this side over here. Again, we're going to flip it over and I'm just going to just for you know safety's sake here I'm going to go ahead and run a little bit of this thin this is going to drip everywhere I should have put something down getting ahead of myself a little bit okay not sure anything's coming out, but I think it is. And that should be well secured. That's going to be one of the harder joints to do, which I think I've proven. <laughs> now I'm trying to decide the best way to show this. Now what I'm going to do, I've got these little, you know, where these joints are, there's a big open area, you know, where I cut it and bent it. So I got a little, little caverns here and I want to fill those and I think I'm pretty much out of my thin super glue so uh, let me go and get some more super glue okay so I went to the store and unfortunately they were out of thin super glue or regular super glue um, luckily a couple days ago I ordered some thin super glue online and that came in about 10 minutes ago so we actually you know we're in luck uh, you, you don't want to use any kind of gel for this it's just going to be harder to to use whenever you're using the uh, baking soda as you saw before the baking soda doesn't work well with gel super glue you need the, the thinner stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some thin super glue in each one of these little gaps and then uh, I'm going to sprinkle over the super glue with the uh, with my baking soda. And this is most likely going to run all over the place. So once again, I didn't learn my lesson the first time. I'm sure there's going to be super glue everywhere. You can see how this thin super glue just soaks into the uh, into the baking soda. And I don't want this applicator to come in contact with the baking soda. Okay, let's put the lid back on this. Oh, first of all, let's wipe it off. I'm being careful because this is a huge bottle of CA glue. And I can almost guarantee that it will turn into a solid block long before I have the opportunity to use it all up. That's the really that's the only real advantage to buying it online to get these big bottles. And once again, CA glue is just short for cyanoacrylate glue, which is the generic term for super glue or crazy glue. Now I'm going to take a sanding stick and just sand that down smooth. And uh, the material you get from mixing CA glue and uh, baking soda is almost like a hard plastic. Okay, 
Now let me get a, uh, a rag. Okay, so now I've got a rag down here because even I will eventually learn from my mistakes. Um, and let's go ahead and do the rest of all these joints. I'm going to go ahead and start out with the baking soda this time instead of starting out with the super glue. I think that's the better choice. Make sure it all gets into the, the little negative space there. And if you can get the rest of it away from, uh, if you can move everything else away from it while still keeping some in there, it'll make life a lot easier. It'll help to actually hit the spot you want. There's a few spots where it bled over, but as you can see, a lot less of a mess this time than the other side. Oh, great. Maybe a non-absorbent rag would have been a better choice. Or better yet, just don't pour gobs of it down in a stream. Okay, now we can go ahead and clean up all this stuff. It's, you could probably get away with not doing anything, but you know, I wanna get this as smooth as I can. Okay, everything is smooth. You can see these little drip marks. Um, that's actually where the, uh, the CA glue um, thinned out the marker that was the line there and made these little marks. It's actually completely smooth. It just looks like there's a drip there. I'll clean this up just a little bit and now I'm going to go ahead and deal with this terrible cut that I made with the, uh, the saber saw or skill saw, whatever you want to call it because um, this really should be smooth all the way out to the end. If I flip this around where this edge is up against it, it actually is perfect all the way across. So I just need to fill in this gap. And I'm going to do that just like I did with these here. I'm going to use the super glue and, or the CA glue and the baking soda. I'm just going to use a lot more baking soda this time. Now I'm going to use this palette knife. You could use a popsicle stick or anything else. Now that I've got that kind of straightened out and smoothed out, I'm going to hit it with the CA glue. Probably makes more sense to start above and let it run downhill. Okay, and that's really, you know, all you have to do. I'll uh, 
come back afterwards and make sure that it's smooth and sand it. Um, and if I have to, I'll do another layer. And be careful, this is a exothermic reaction, which means it's a, or maybe it's an endothermic, I can't remember. <laughs> it's a thermal reaction. It gets hot when the, uh, when it reacts. That worked out quite well. That's completely level now. And uh, we can kind of go on. But before we go on, let's talk about what I would do differently. Basically, all the mistakes that I made and how to not make them. So, um, the main thing is, I think when I bent this originally, I would bend just this angle here and this angle here on both sides and not worry about this last one just because I don't know why it's different. But the important thing is that it matches this piece. So I would bend those and then I would glue just from here to here and then I would heat up this and bend it to match this piece right here. Um, also, I would, said I would tell you how I got the center mark here because I couldn't trust these angles. If you got, a, if you did a good job of cutting this out originally, then you could just measure, you know, from here to here, and get the middle. But um, since I couldn't trust that angle right there, I just took my square and I came all the way up to the very edge of the circle here, and I drew a line, did that on both sides, and that gave me the. Uh, the two marks that I could then find the center point. So you know, just measure that and then measure half of that and that's your center line. Uh, and that's how I got that. So obviously the straighter that this bottom edge of this piece is, the better this is going to glue on. Um, the problems that I had were because I did not address the fact that these were a little bit, you know, this half and this half were slightly off. I should have smoothed that as straight as I could before I did anything else. Um, that would have made this glue on a lot easier. But then, like I said, straighten everything out, then make your bends for these two pieces, then glue just this part on, heat this up, make it match these angles here, and then glue them on like we did here. Um, and then, like you saw before, um, if you're going to use the CA glue, I mean, if you're going to use the, uh, the baking soda, use the thin CA glue, not the gel, and that'll work a lot better. And uh, like you just saw, it works a lot better if you put the baking soda down first and then put the CA glue on top of the baking soda. And uh, now we're all caught up and we can go on from there. The next thing we're going to do here is to drop this piece of PVC in place. Um, this is four inch PVC. I'm not sure what your dimensions are in Europe or any place that uses the metric system, but I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 centimeters because that's pretty close to the internal diameter of this pipe. Um, PVC pipe is measured by its internal diameter, but its external diameter should be what we want. Um, in this case, it's gonna be four and a half inches. What is that in millimeters or centimeters? That is uh, 11 and a half centimeters. This particular piece, um, you wanna cut it in a length of 13 and a quarter inches, which is pretty close to 33.7 centimeters. I want to say it was actually 336.6 millimeters. So I just rounded it up. Um, it's pretty close to the same. We can't just glue this on here. We need to make some, some marks. Uh, so you want to measure the width of your three pieces of Sintra that's glued together here. The reason I want to say measure it this should theoretically be three quarters of an inch, but you know how things are. Um, and when I 
measured them, it's actually a sixteenth of an inch larger than that. So you want to take whatever measurement that is and subtract it from your 13 a quarter or 33.7 centimeters. And that'll give you uh, where to put your marks. Now this is the second time I've filmed this because for some reason I kept putting the marks in the wrong place because I don't know why. Uh, the first mark I'm gonna put is down the center seam because I know that'll be 90 degrees. And in my case, it should be uh, 1 16th, 1 16th of an inch shy of 12 and a half inches. So what is that? Uh, 7, 12 and 7 sixteenths. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use my little square here to make sure that I'm coming out reasonably close to 90 degrees. I'm going to make another mark. That is 12 and a half minus a sixteenth, or 12 and seven sixteenths. And the reason you want to measure it like this, because it's really easy to get, you think it looks straight and it's really not even close to being straight. So by making these careful measurements, um, my measurements are not lining up. I think with, again, it's the glue getting in the way Now let's see if this lines up. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and glue on these two pieces here. And if you recall, the part that we wrote on faces toward the top. And this is going to line up perfectly with that mark. I'm just going to kind of dry fit it for a second. They should go directly to the middle and line up with those marks. It's not going to stamp on its own. And I'm just going to, for the heck of it, make sure that this lines up with everything else. And it all lines up good. So let's go ahead and glue these pieces on just like that. Now I'm looking at my angles here. They're not perfect. But that's okay, I can go ahead, once I glue this down, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe hit that with a hot glue and see if I can bend it down. I'm not the hot glue. Hit it with a heat gun and see if I can bend that down. If not, I'll just fill it in with the, um, with the uh, baking powder or baking soda and uh, CA glue. This might be a time when the gel would be a better idea just because it's going to stay where it's supposed to. I'm, not, I'm going to not put any on right here. And I'm going to use my little square to make sure that it's perfectly square. little zip kicker here. Do the same thing on this side. Once again, not going to do that little bit that are at the end. Just making sure that it's square. Okay. Give that a couple seconds to make sure it's totally cured, and then we'll go ahead and put in that piece of PVC. Okay, I talked about heating these up, these corners down here, and bending them down to match this. But now that I think about that, these curves right now they match perfectly with these three inch tubes, they're gonna go on either side, and if we bend those down, it's no longer going to fit perfectly with these tubes. So instead of bending these, I think we're just going to fill that gap. And probably the easiest thing to do would be just to take some hot glue and force it into that gap. 
you could absolutely um, fill that with um, baking soda and super glue. Um, this is just going to be a little bit quicker and easier process. And the hot glue will give it the support that it needs. And it'll just be a lot faster than trying to fill it with anything else. Initially, I was just going to use the hot glue to fill in the back and then put the baking soda in there and use the super glue. However, it just seemed a lot easier to just fill up with uh, hot glue. Now we can go ahead and place our PVC pipe into here. Pretty straightforward. I'm gonna just kind of dry fit it here to figure out, here's the problem. This circle and the circle in the back are perfectly circular. PVC pipe, however, is not. So I'm gonna kind of rotate this around until I find you know what kind of fits the best that looks pretty good there actually still got a pretty big gap over here but it fills this side really nice and I'm just gonna put a mark so that we can line those up the back yeah I think the back still fits pretty well I can see some pretty once again it's this this side over here it's got some big gaps, but it looks pretty nice on this side here. And I think probably once again, we're gonna, let's go ahead and use the gel super glue, just because it will stay in position. It's gonna stay in place. Try to be careful putting this in because I don't want to push all the super glue out and make a huge mess. But apparently I'm going to. It's not quite lined up perfectly, but this is gonna line up pretty well on its own, but I want to force this front part to line up as well as I can get it to. And I'm going to glue my finger to everything in the process, I'm sure. If only there was a magical glue that glued to everything except for your fingers, as opposed to CA glue, which glues your fingers better than anything else. Okay, this I have somehow managed to glue slightly wrong everywhere. But it's still going to be fine. because I don't imagine there's not much I can do about it at this point. This was so easy to line up before I put glue on it and now it's really being difficult. Let's see, what I need to do is Oddly enough, it's a little bit short here in the front and in the back, which I'm a little confused by. But you know what? I think it's gonna be good enough because I don't think I can really change it very much at this point. And um, I can fill these gaps in and smooth them out. It's not going to be that critical a build. I mean, the tolerances are not that great or that fine. Okay, so it's in place. Now we just need to make it in place better. And that's gonna mean filling up some of these gaps. I think I can use this thin CA glue in these areas where it's not glued at all. 
it really is thin. You saw it just run everywhere. But that's extremely well attached now. And my fingers are well super glued, but that's okay. So now that this is a fix, let's go about filling in all these gaps, mostly on this side. And you could use the hot glue just like we did here. Um, but I want to make sure this is extremely well attached. And while hot glue does work pretty well, I want to make sure that this is super solid because this is one of the, one of the main parts of the uh, jetpack itself. So I'm going to use the hot glue, but I'm just going to use it to sort of seal the back up here. Do the same thing. Okay, so that should stop the baking soda from falling through. Now I'm just going to take the baking soda and fill up any gaps that I've got in here. Just like before, you could, you could use a popsicle stick or anything like that, anything that's got a straight side on it. I just want to smooth everything out and remove any excess. I want to remove as much excess uh, baking soda as I can. I keep trying to say baking powder. There's a little bit of a gap between the level of the PVC pipe and the level of the um, Sintra. So that just filled that up. Um, but I do want to be careful because I don't want there to be any super glue on the inside of the PVC pipe because I'm going to have to eventually fit another PVC pipe into that. And that's going to be hard to do if it's got super glue dried inside there. Also, if it's got a coating of super glue on there, it's not the PVC glue is not going to uh, glue everything together. But we'll worry about that later. For any super glue that's not touching uh, baking soda, that just keeps me from gluing my fingers down. Okay, we're good. Do the same thing on this end. Let me see if I can set this up so that you can see it. Okay, I'm just going to do this the same way. Um, as you can see, there's a huge gap here. I think what's going on is this piece is not 90 degrees to this piece. It's kind of angled that way a little bit, um, which is okay. Um, this, I'm going to smooth all of this stuff out. I'm trying to decide whether or not I should try to raise the height of this or just sand all of this level. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go ahead and just fill this. I'm not going to try to make this all flat, but I'm just going to fill in this area and then I'll round all of this off anyway because there's a, uh, a piece that goes recessed into here with the vent in it. Um, we'll start out by just filling in that this gap and smooth it up. This might need a little bit more cosmetic work later on, but for now, I really want to try to get as much 
baking soda into those cracks as possible. Okay, we're going to use a fair amount of this because I want this to penetrate as deeply as I can. Probably the smart thing to do would be put just a little bit down, then put some more baking soda on top of that, and then put some more down and build that up. But we'll see how this does. I'm less worried about the inside of the PVC at this end. Okay, I'm gonna give that a few minutes. Okay, it's a little bit warm still, so there's still some reaction going on there, but I think we're pretty good at that point. And yeah, this thing's nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. If I Kind of like we said before, um, what would I do differently this time? I think uh, I would not put this. I would not put the hot glue down. I think the um, I think the baking soda would have stayed for the most part. And then after I did this, I would check and see if there was any baking soda down on this end, and then fill that in with super glue from this end as well. But I think all in all, this is, I mean, this is solid as a rock. So I think we're all good there. Hopefully this is all, any of this is on camera. But um, let's go ahead and work on putting in the, uh, the aluminum tubes here. I think that'll be our next part of the project. Okay, let's talk about these tubes. Um, this is an aluminum tube. It's not very thick, maybe two millimeters. Um, you don't really need a lot of thickness here. You know, mostly you're just looking for the outside diameter. And with that in mind, let's talk about the difference between a pipe, which is like these PVC pipe, and a tube. Um, with a pipe, the diameter of the pipe will be the inside diameter because they're concerned about what's running through it. With a tube, you're talking about the outside diameter. Um, and that's important because we're really concerned with making sure we have a three inch diameter here. You don't have to use an aluminum tube. You can use whatever kind of tube you can find, but it does need to have a three inch outside diameter. Um, I've looked at several other things, including paper tubes, very interested in saving weight. So I got some paper tubes and tried that. Unfortunately, even though this is called a tube, and it's a three inch tube. It's actually more like three and a quarter on its outside diameter. And that's because even though this is a paper tube, it's for holding things, which means they're really more concerned about the inside diameter. And it's too big to really work here. I said, I tried many things before I decided to go ahead and just get uh, an aluminum tube. I got this from a metal supermarket and uh, that's just a, a chain of metal distributors throughout the United States. Um, I happen to have one that's pretty close to my house. I think probably most people will, but if not, they will deliver. Um, you know, they'll ship it to you. Also, before I got these, the ones I did on the prototype, I just bought those on Amazon. I just looked up three inch aluminum tubing and I bought 30 inches of it, which is about 72 centimeters. Take it back, it's like 76 centimeters. So I got that, I bought 30 inches of it, and I cut two sections that are uh, 14 and a quarter inches long, which is about 
36.1 centimeters, or I guess 361 millimeters. And uh, that'll give you a little bitty ring left over, which you'll probably will end up using later on, but I'm not sure. After I cut this into that length, I wiped the whole thing down with acetone because I wanted to get rid of any wax or grease that was on it. And then I just took a, uh, my sanding stick and just scuffed up this back end. Hopefully you can see that that's scuffed up. And then I measured to where this part is and I scuffed up that area up here as well. I just wanted to have a little bit of a tooth. The super glue works super well on um, PVC, but it doesn't have as much to grab onto with the uh, aluminum. So I'm gonna just rough things up a little bit. Now I tried uh, hot glue as well as super glue when I was testing this out and they both grabbed about the same. So I'm gonna go with the super glue. And when you glue this on, you want it to be flush in the back. Now, if you're like mine and your back's not 90 degrees from the, or the, I should say the bottom, is not 90 degrees to the back of this, you want to line up, line the back of this tubing up with whatever part, I'm trying to say how to put this, uh, with the part that sticks out the most. So in other words, here, maybe I can just show this. You'd rather it, the pipe stick out a little bit than be recessed in. So whichever way it leans, make sure that you're flush with the part that sticks out the furthest and then the pipe sticks out a little bit from the back. And with that, let's go ahead and just glue this up. In my case, the, uh, it's this top part that is uh, sticking out the furthest. So that's where I'm gonna line it up. I'm just gonna hold this tight up against the uh, Sintra. Okay, that is stuck. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off any excess and let's repeat the process i'll go ahead and do this one uh, from scratch okay so i know the back part's going to be flush with this so let's go ahead and scuff that all up you want to use sandpaper on this as opposed to a file because a file it does make scratches, but it kind of shaves everything off. It's got little lines that go across. Whereas uh, sandpaper is going to make lots of little scratches. And that's what we want. Okay. And then holding this in place. Okay. And let's just repeat the process here. And I'm lining this up once again with the very top of my back piece because that's the part that sticks out the most. Okay. Now, much like we did with this, I'm gonna go ahead and fill any gaps with um, baking soda and super glue. And there are some. Yeah, quite a bit on this one, in fact. That didn't fit very well at all. I'm not comfortable with the way this fits, actually, at all. So I may, yeah, look like somehow our super glue It could be the fact that I just didn't do a very good job of cutting this piece out round. Because this side fits fine, and this is all the same size pipe, so I think it just been, must be an error in the way I cut it out. Yeah, 
And I could just fill in those gaps, but I would rather this fit into position a little better. I don't want this to be out of position by that much. So it looks like it's hitting on these two edges for the most part. Yeah, that's just a, I think this sticks out just about a 32nd of an inch too much. Since I'm filming, I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, little finger sander and make a little quick work of that. So the sanding stick would work fine on this, but um, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, that fits much better. I think maybe I'll take just a tiny bit off right there. I think I can see the line there still too, so that shows that I didn't quite make the hole big enough there. Okay. Think anything else that I'm in danger of overdoing it. So let's try to glue that up again. Really need to get some more zip kicker. Nothing's coming out, but that's stuck. It looks like there's a big gap there, but that's really just black marker. Okay, let's go ahead and see if I can fill up any gaps that might be here. Um, I can't really see this side at all. Okay, so we do have a fairly big gap there. Here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to take some of this gel super glue. I'm going to try to squeeze it. Probably have to flip this over to do it though. Okay, let's slow down for a second. Let's do this side and then I can flip this over and do that. And let's go ahead and do what we have here on this side. So let's go ahead and flip this over. So I just clogged the bottom up a little bit with some gel super glue and see if we can't gently put some of this down here and do the same thing on the bottom down here. It doesn't look to be very much of a gap on this part after we worked on it. This time I'll do a little better job of cleaning up the uh, cleaning up the baking soda. I always hesitate because I'm I keep trying to say baking powder. Okay, you can see there's a big gap here, but I'll do the same thing from the other side and this will hold the baking soda in place. I can see a pretty big gap underneath here. It's due to the uh, bad sawing that I did with the skill saw. That may be a gel super glue fix. There's no way I'm going to be able to make it where you can see this. I'm out of zip kicker, so I'm going to see if I can just kind of throw some of this in there. Now let's flip this over. Probably gonna have to come back in from the top as well.
I have to be careful with this one because I've got quite a bit of baking soda down on things that I do not want glued. And last but not least, let's deal with this big gap here that I made with the sander. Now I definitely don't want there to be a big mound on this because this is part of uh, the shape of the whole thing. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this one as well. Okay, and now we can do one last thing on this. I apologize for you not being able to see any of that, but I just did this crack here and this crack over here. Okay, so now all we have left to do is to put on these attachment points. Um, we're gonna start with the bottom here. And if you'll recall, I was planting on, or I was planning on uh, drilling a hole and putting one of these bolts through here and then putting a nut and a fender washer on the back side but uh, that was before I remembered how thick this base piece is here and you don't want this to be way up here because that's really going to affect the height of the jetpack. Um, jetpack tends to ride kind of low uh, with the strap brace and everything and this ideally should line up so the top of this should line up with the top of the back armor on the boba fett's back armor so you really want to put this pretty close to even with the bottom and so that means instead of drilling a hole and using a nut and bolt instead we're going to have to go with these screws this is also a number 10 screw so it has the same countersunk head um, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to go ahead and glue this as well as screwing this into position. And that really should make it strong enough um, that uh, this should be okay without using a fender washer and a nut on the back. Now, assuming you're using the same strap brace that, you know, I made before, um, you want these to, uh, you want to drill holes that are six and a half inches apart, or about 16 and a half centimeters apart. So that's gonna be three and a quarter inches from this center point. You should probably measure yours just to make sure that everything's the same. Um, I mean, things can end up differently uh, or I should say things could end up different when you know two different people make the same thing so just make sure that the distance I'm trying to see exactly how to explain this um, let me grab the one that I did not use so essentially we have this and then you've got a bar that's attached to it that sticks out like this ideally you want these to come down as close to the center or you know as close to this piece as possible because that'll stop it from sliding around if the two pieces are pretty close to this then it's kind of locked in place it can't move either direction because you know one side can't slide one way and the other side can't slide the other way but you want to give yourself a little bit of leeway so when i measured that it was six and a half inches um, but you should check yours just to make sure it agrees with mine.
And hopefully, as you can see, um, I've scratched this up pretty good so that the glue has a chance of gripping on here. And it looks like I'll be drilling directly between these two layers. So hopefully they're glued well together. I don't want to use the same one because they're not made perfectly exactly the same. So I'm going to use the, you know, I'll use this one to mark this hole. And I'll use this one to mark this hole. This might be slightly above the layer. And for these number 10 screws, I'm going to use a eighth of an inch um, bit. That's what, three millimeters? That of course moved on me. That's why I gave it a little bit of leeway. Oh, and by the way, okay, I just I kind of gave you the wrong information before. When you've got your piece here, and you put these as close as you can get to there, to put them on backwards, um, it's not the distance here and here, it's the distance between the two hole marks that you want to actually measure. Um, so, don't measure this as your minimum and then drill your holes to that. You need to put your pieces on um, and then measure the distance between the holes in these two pieces. Now let's go on. Now I feel like I should probably do a dry fit You want to use as coarse a thread as you can get because you want it to cut into this Sintra. Okay, now that I have this dry fit, I'm going to go ahead and take this in the other room and make sure that this fits properly on the, um, on the frame rail. Or I'm sorry, on the strap frame. It fits perfectly, so let's go ahead and take these off. Now, before I do that, I think I'm going to mark around them. I feel like I'd be able to control the glue better if I glue it onto the back as opposed to onto the actual pieces. Make sure you don't over tighten the screws, especially when you just dry fit it. Going back with the uh, super glue gel, honestly, probably you could get away, or I say get away, it might even be better um, up on these aluminum tubes and this aluminum, you know, these aluminum pieces here. If you use something like JB Weld, uh, which is an epoxy that's a metal epoxy, um, that would probably give you the most secure um, attachment. The problem with that, of course, is that it takes 24 hours to dry and I never seem to have that kind of time, or at least not that kind of patience. At least not until it comes to painting. Definitely don't want super glue stuck to my square here. I'm just trying to make sure that this is somewhat square to the bottom. I'm only going back and forth because I was afraid that the uh, super glue was going to glue it into place. So hopefully by the time I get the screw all the way down, the uh, super glue will have 
permanently or semi-permanently held these into the right position. And it moved. Okay, now we have a way to drop this onto the uh, strap frame. Now we just need to put a couple of hooks at the top that the, um, the actual straps will attach to. You can use the same pieces that we made before, or you can do like I did, which is I'm gonna use these. Um, like I said also earlier, um, I got these off of Amazon. They were called holster clips. They, you might also find them called belt clips. Um, but the ones that I found on Amazon were called holster clips. These are one inch wide, which is two and a half centimeters by roughly uh, two inches long, so five centimeters. And, um, you know, you can also, you know, do the same thing as we did back here if you want to. I'm just doing this because the fact that it's kind of spring loaded will help hold the, this little piece on. Only gravity is going to hold the bottom on, so I wanted something just to make sure that, um, you know, if something happened, this wasn't just going to pop off the back, off of my back and fall down. So it's not necessary, but I, I kind of like that, uh, feeling of security. So the first thing we're going to do is take a flexible straight edge. As you can see, I've tried to do this like twice and messed up both times. So I'm going to find a better straight edge. In this case, I'm just using a piece of thick paper. I'm going to cut this in half real quick. Okay, so now I have a more appropriately sized piece of thick paper. And what I want to do is I want to draw a line from, this is the top of the back, um, from this corner to that corner, I want to draw a line straight across. And this isn't rocket science, it doesn't have to be super precise, but um, I would like it to be, you know, within a quarter of an inch. <laughs> so, I'm going to use a marker this time so I can see it in contrast to the other two marks that were done in pencil. Okay, and I'm going to need a, I can see where the two pieces of Centra were glued together. So now I just need to make a projection of that down so that I can mark the center of this. Make a quick measurement just to see. Well, it's a little off, so I'm going to take the effort to actually measure. So find your center point, and then you want to measure out um, the space you want it to be is nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. So you want to get half of that, so four and a quarter inches. Okay, yeah, looks like it's in the right place. So I'm just gonna lay this here and I want this to be the center and I want this to be in line with this top line here. But here's the thing. Ideally, I would like it to run along the same angle as this line here. So that's like one and a quarter inches for me. Just gonna draw a line there. Do the same here. And now I can mark this. So I'm just gonna line that up. It's really not that precise if you want to line it up with just the bottom of that line, which I think I'm going to do just to uh, be safe and consistent. 
and then I'm gonna mark my two marks here. And you can probably get away with just drilling one of these holes. In fact, that'd probably be the smartest thing to do. We're just gonna do one of these holes, the one that's furthest from the top. That way, if there's any excess tension, it will just rotate around that point. Would you believe that ran directly into here? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to move this down a little further. I was trying to line this up with what it looked like the actual prop was, but I can only assume that it's actually attached a little further down. So here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say instead of across here, you can draw that line, but then I would measure down another half of an inch. That's about 13 millimeters. Yeah, 12, 12 to 13 millimeters. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the safe thing to do. So do the same procedure that we did before, but just start off with this a half of an inch down from that line. And we'll try that again. So I'm gonna go with a 3 16th bit. And let's just drop these into place. Okay, I swear I'd tested these before, but these are ever so slightly too small. So I'm gonna drill this out with the same bit as that. And I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got these. I'm not sure exactly why, what should have been one of the easiest parts of this build is driving me crazy, but then we got a little bit of go fever going here. I have to get this in here because apparently the head of this screw is too large for, or the head of this bolt is too large for this uh, front side here. Okay, finally, I have these in there. Um, I don't think you'll have that problem because these are not actually round head uh, uh, bolts. These are trestle head, which are a little lower and a little fatter. So I think that's probably what the problem has been. Yeah. The opening is facing down and I want the screw in the bottom most hole. Now, finally, this four minute job that's taken about 20 minutes now and because um, we're gonna actually be able to use a fender washer and a nut on this I don't think I'm gonna glue it okay I'm gonna use some nylock nuts um, because there's a piece of nylon here that'll keep this from loosening up. And you have to remember that we're gonna seal all this up and you really won't have access to it. Um, so you want to make sure that this does not come unscrewed at any point in its future life. So use nylock nuts or um, some uh, thread stopper, you know, some uh, Loctite. And I'm not sure if I can get to this on camera. Maybe I can. Okay, now to tighten everything up. Let's take a look at that. You know, considering the difficulties that we had working on this, um, I'm really super pleased with how it turned out so far. Um, even though we've, you know, we have had some difficulties, uh, some of this stuff that I've been working on for years now, you know, planning positions of things and 
at this point to put this together and then be able to walk up here and as easy as this have that clip on like that and be super well attached I mean that is not loose in the slightest and it fits perfectly it's in all of the right places I'm kind of ecstatic about it um, so all in all I'd say this build is going really well you know the basic drill at this point um, if you're still watching this ridiculously long video please subscribe um, and click the bell and all that good stuff and please comment um, you've got to have some questions no matter how small ask them or make any comments you want to say if you see things that you think I could have done differently that also works as well um, likes comments all that good stuff and uh, I'll see you next time. So until then, thanks.